Just over 48 hours after she landed back on Australian soil, the widow of an Islamic State, his fighter has been seen at a McDonald's in Punchbowl, enjoying a meal with her children. Maryam Debussy landed in Sydney on Saturday morning. The 31-year-old and her three children were among a planeload rescued by the Australian government from the Al Rhodes refugee camp in northern Syria, where they have been languishing for three years since the fall of his held baghouse. Read more. First as families arrive in Sydney after repatriation in a statement on Saturday, the government confirmed it had repatriated four Australian women and their 13 Australian children and that allegations of unlawful activity will continue to be investigated, and any identified offences may lead to law enforcement action being taken. But Nine News understands criminal charges are unlikely. Debussy is the subject of voluntary orders but she is not required to wear an ankle bracelet, is not under 24-hour police supervision, nor is she subject to strict terrorism control orders, because there is no legal basis for any of it. On Saturday, Nine News was told the rescued families were being held in a secure location to be interviewed by police. But by Sunday afternoon, Debussy was at her family home near Blacktown, her three children enjoying a visit to a park, exploring flying foxes and play equipment. The Debussy's young son has been obsessed with the greenery of their Western Sydney backyard, while their eight-year-old daughter is malnourished, currently the weight of a four-year-old. All three children have dental issues and are now on the search for schools in the new year. They are receiving medical and counseling support from the NSW government. Debussy left her condo park home with her husband, Khaled Zahab, in 2015. She claims she thought she was going on holiday to Turkey. Her husband died fighting for is three months after they arrived. In a 2019 interview, she told the ABC that she was tricked into coming to Syria by her husband. Her father Kamale maintains there is no evidence to say she joined is. Debussy's sister-in-law, 31-year-old Maryam Rod, was also on Saturday's plane home with her four children. Rod, who may have been in Syria as early as 2013, is the widow of Mohamed Zahab, a former Western Sydney maths teacher who became one of Australia's most senior as leaders. He is accused of luring at least a dozen of his extended family to Syria, including his brother Khaled. Read more, out of sight, Islamic State is rebuilding Yazidi refugee Salam Karo, now settled in Armadale, has told Nine News the women are dangerous for everyone that lives in Australia. Karo escaped northern Iraq in 2019, where he says is committed horrible and brutal crimes against the Yazidi people. He doesn't believe the as widows claim that they were all coerced to Syria and doesn't think they can be rehabilitated. They are very dangerous, he said, to be honest, if not today, next year, if not next year, in the future. They made their decision and they went to be part of, is, and be part of Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. And they should NT be back anyway, in any case at all, because they chose to go and be part of killing the people and the Yazidi community. Haro says the Australian government should instead be locating more places for the Yazidis and for the people who make Australia better, not bringing those people who make Australia worried and put us in danger. After being informed of the Prime Minister's rescue plans, NSW Premier Dominic Perotic wrote to Anthony Albanese seeking assurances the NSW cohort was assessed as presenting no risk to the community, intelligence agencies were monitoring the individuals and that resettlement and reintegration costs were subsidized by the federal government. The state government has received no response, the Morrison government refused to repatriate the women and children in 2019 due to security risks. On Sunday, Shadow Minister for Home Affairs Karen Andrews said she was concerned for the people of Australia. I am concerned about what will be put in place to make sure that these women and children are not in a position that they will cause any risk at all to Australian people, she said. 
The families of the as widows have been campaigning with advocacy groups Save the Children to bring them home for years. They are victims of war, CEO Matt Tinkler told Nine News, and first and foremost, their children. These kids are innocent and we have to get them the benefit of the doubt. They are Aussie citizens at the end of the day. Other countries around the world, the US, Germany, Denmark, have all made this choice. It's a difficult choice but at the end of the day a country has to take responsibility for its own citizens. The Prime Minister yesterday said, these are Australian citizens who are entitled to be in Australia, our one and only priority is to keep Australians safe. We're following national security advice on all of those matters and will continue to do so. Another 43 Australian women and children are expected to be repatriated from the Syrian camp in the next few months.